When I first started watching anime, as most do, I began with Netflix. And amidst the many wonderful shows at the time that were readily available for my prepubescent tastes, there was one show in particular that piqued my interests. Fate Zero. There's always something intriguing about the battle royale concept in, in any form. Despite all of Fate Zero's best attempts to confiscate the simple concept with ponderous philosophical vernacular and debate, which I absolutely love about the show, by the way. But when reminiscing on this incredible 2011 series extending beyond just myself and my personal love for the ethical and moral debates it digs its teeth into, the often inspiring clash of old, antiquated doctrines compared to our modern ideas, what lies past that, the common ground that I can find with everyone that loves this series, is the animation, of course. The studio behind works like the Fate series and Demon Slayer, Ufotable, has been famous for many years now, arguably ever since the aforementioned Fate series and its sequel, Fate's Day Night Unlimited Blade Works later dubbed Unlimited Budget Works by fans because of the sheer magnificence and peerless animation quality it contained. But even this was nothing compared to the studio's skyrocket in popularity following the release of Demon Slayer, its most recent season cementing itself as one of the best follow-up seasons to date in anime, and a promising premonition of what is to come in Season 3 which was, of course, already announced mere days after the second season aired its last episode. But as I said, ever since I first started watching anime, I've been a fan of Ufotable's work. Dabbling in most of their anime, both shows and movies, over the years I've continuously developed an affinity for the studio that really embodies the idea of quality over quantity. Today I wanted to peruse through the studio's history, some of the most beautiful anime and stories they've crafted, and how they've cemented their place among some of the biggest names in the industry now with animation that truly never fails. If you've only seen Demon Slayer, or haven't even seen any Ufotable anime yet, you're in for a treat. Long before the Fate series or Demon Slayer, but a bit after what was a multiple year stretch of pretty forgettable works that the studio first started out with, a mixture of Ufotable original series and adaptations that were, to put it simply, not good, Ufotable got its first real kickstart with Kara no Kyokai, or The Garden of Sinners, a seven part movie series aired between 2007 and 2009. Following Ryogo Shiki, a demon hunter with mystic eyes of death perception, as she, well, hunts and investigates demons, it's a series filled with action, mystery, and badassery galore. Based on the light novel of the same name, similar to the Monogatari series, the series and its seven movies were released in non-chronological order, adding both complexity and confusion to the already heavy themes dealing with the animus, sin, and reincarnation, ultimately concocting a good, but puzzling series. As much as I enjoyed it, Kara no Kyokai's delivery of deeper ideologies felt like a bit too much for me when I first watched it, making the rest of the series feel like little more than a slightly lackluster and muddled support for the larger themes at play. I more so appreciate it for what it stands as among Ufotable's works, a well-made and very strong first attempt at all of the things they did finally end up succeeding with in the Fate franchise. Let me give a bit of context behind that. Kara no Kyokai was the very first project and light novel created by writer Kinoko Nasu and arter Takashi Takeuchi, better known as the co-founders of Type Moon, the famed Japanese gaming and publishing company. As the very first work from Type Moon, it's only fair that Kara no Kyokai isn't the peak of their production nor creative pursuits and this is reflected in the anime just as much as the light novel, but it was, nonetheless, a great start for many reasons. Ufotable's adaptation proved their animation prowess at a time where top-tier animation wasn't nearly emphasized as much as it is now. Amidst the competition, 
if it could even be called that, with Gurren Lagann and only a few other exceptional shows exceeding the rather homogenized standard of animation in the mid to late 2000s, Ufotable's now signature combination of CG and 2D animation was, at the time, genuinely unprecedented. Picture perfect scenery and backgrounds, smooth and visually stunning battle sequences, it was more than enough to grab the keen eye of many interested anime fans, if nothing else about the movies could. It also introduced some of the most fundamental concepts in the overarching universe of Type Moon's works to come, like the Root, Counterforce, Magecraft, and Mystic Eyes. The hints and intrigue of a new, larger universe at hand combined with near-perfect animation were promising signs of what was to come from the studio, what could come. And patrons who remained faithful to Ufotable and Type Moon's partnership would soon have their dedication paid in full, starting in 2011 with the adaptation of Type Moon's most acclaimed series and first big hit, Fate Zero and the rest of the Fate franchise that would follow in suit for the next decade. The Fate series is easily one of anime's most popular names. Starting as the adult visual novel Fate Stay Night in 2004, it spawned sequels, prequels, and spin-offs in the form of light novels, manga series, and even more visual novels multiple fighting games, and one of the most popular gacha games across the western world, Fate Grand Order, and anime adaptations from two different studios, Studio Dean and Ufotable, the latter of which being the famous and, frankly, good one. Even within the vast Type Moon universe, Fate has its own galaxy of complex lore and a nearly endless throng of characters and mixed-up storylines. It's a lot. But if you follow just the anime by Ufotable, it's actually quite digestible and far easier to follow than its complex web of adaptations makes it out to be. In the Fate universe, the Holy Grail War is a contest founded by three ancient families centuries ago, in which seven mages each summon their own heroic spirits, who are famed figures from the past, like King Arthur of the Round Table and the epic King of Kings, Gilgamesh to compete and obtain the Holy Grail, a source of endless power that grants a wish to each member of the winning pair, or more so the last pair standing. Fate Zero, a prequel that was actually created after the original Fate Stay Night, follows Kiritsugu Emiya through the fourth Holy Grail War, and Fate Stay Night follows Shido Emiya through the fifth Holy Grail War ten years after the events of Fate Zero, in three different routes. Fate, Unlimited Blade Works, and Heaven's Field. Now why are there three different adaptations of the same story? The unfamiliar view might ask. This is usually a cause for concern for new fans trying to get into the series. Well, visual novels, which is of course Fate Stay Night's original format, are games that are driven by the player's decisions. Your choices decide whether you end up on a good route, or a bad one, or neutral one, but with a couple things you didn't like, and these are the three stories of Fate Stay Night that you can end up on, which happen to also be associated with ending up with three different girls. Ufotable adapted Fate Zero in 2011, Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blade Works in 2014, and Heaven's Feel in a three-part movie series from 2017 to 2020. You can watch the original Fate Route that was animated by Studio Dean in 2006 for extra credit if you want, but it's not really worth the effort. Ufotable's work on the Fate series is what really spread the good word around. Because the studio and animators were already familiar with Takashi Takeuchi's art, the animation only stood to improve since the already astounding work done in Kara no Kyokai. And so, what really works with Ufotable? Why are they able to stand out so compared to other competitors? Why is their style so distinct? A lot of reasons, really. But first and foremost, Ufotable is one of very few studios that does as much work as possible in-house. Most studios outsource animation, especially CG, to freelancers, and it keeps prices lower, but Ufotable keeps most works with just their employees, similar to the famed and beloved Kyoto Animation. This extends to their CG work as well, boasting one of the largest in-house CG studios among animation companies. 
And the reason that this doesn't overwork their employees is because, unlike other certain studios, <clears throat> they don't overload themselves with multiple projects at a time. Looking at their videography, you'll find that there's very little overlap in the production periods of their big projects. Once again, pointing at Ufotable's idea that if you're going to do something, do it well. Ufotable series with multiple cores, or more than 12 to 13 episodes, are almost always split into different seasons to, once again, allow them time to create a proper final product. Take time and stun the world with what they've crafted. And unlike the name Unlimited Budget Works suggests, Ufotable's insane production quality actually stems from their independence and dedication to each work, rather than some vast and endless budget for each project. It's because of this in-house, precise quality that they also have such a distinct style of their own in combining CG with 2D animation, and absolutely stunning backgrounds that actually mirror that of real life, sometimes frighteningly so. Without outsourcing, the production stays consistent and leaves fans remembering and recognizing their signature style that never fails to let us down. The Fate series is also just great source material. Kinoko Nasu and Takashi Takeuchi once again teamed up on this work, like in Kara no Kyokai, which is no surprise here, considering what I just said about Ufotable's dedication to in-house work. And Fate Zero, though it was still drawn by Takeuchi, was written by Gen Urobuchi, who's won numerous awards for screenwriting on famed anime, like Puella Magi Madoka Magica, which I recommend as well, another beautiful show from 2011. Fate Zero received critical claim across the board. A treasure, brilliant, masterfully crafted narrative, characters, and of course, many of them mention once again the stunning visuals. Ufotable continue to improve and improve, with their tenure on the Fate series ending with the grand spectacle of eye candy that is Heaven's Feel, a series of movies that truly feel incomprehensibly beautiful and well animated. And then their long-standing success with Type Moon, which had certainly already been enough to popularize the studio on its own, was quickly overshadowed somehow after the hottest new manga swept them off their feet and took the world by storm. Demon Slayer has rapidly become one of the most famous anime currently out there, with its manga even surpassing One Piece, the manga monolith itself, in copies sold the year before the series ended, what was a surprisingly short serialization period. It's got great characters and all the action you would expect of a shonen powerhouse. But many actually dispute the series' fame and attribute it entirely to its god-tier animation from Ufotable. Which isn't really true, or possible, as animation alone wasn't able to save, say, 2016's Tales of Zestiria of X and 2017 Katsugeki Token Rambu from falling into the abyss of Ufotable's well-animated series that simply didn't have enough else going for him. Demon Slayer hit the jackpot, frankly. It was already a beloved manga series in Shonen Jump that received animation after being adapted that elevated it beyond anything we could have hoped for. One Piece, Attack on Titan, Haikyuu, there's, there's so many famous series that have experienced hate and overwhelming complaints over, sometimes very minimal, drops in animation quality. Ultimately detracting from the fans' trust in the shows and the studios to live up to the manga's quality let alone exceeding it like they did with Demon Slayer. There's not much I can say about this series that isn't already known, but I think it's unanimously agreed that it keeps getting better. And I bet Ufotable will continue to do the same. As always, this has been the Anime Culture Corner. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future in-depth show manga and character analysis.